Second to the starters orders qualifiers here at Ludlow is over the larger obstacles. Same listen to the previous race, but those larger obstacles to navigate for horses rated up to 120. Bacat All, Davy Lad, First Prize, Ryan Tamasebi, Long Haul, Graham Clutterbuck, Thunderbirds are Go, Paul Rhodes, Glowing Shrew, James Shea, Eleanor Rigby, Martin Leadham, Heron Island, Terry Hansen, and Kyle Rare for Thomas Rogers completes your lineup of eight. Let go to post here for the starters orders qualifier. They're off and running, and Heron Island is going to have that early lead, but quickly be impressed by Martin Leadham's horse, Eleanor Rigby, on the near side. Thunderbirds are go settled in third place for Paul Rhodes as they come to that first flight, and all over it safely. Eleanor Rigby still has the lead from Heron Island in second place as they quickly approach that next flight. And again, all over it safely. Long haul, slightly awkward over it at the rear of the field and racing widest of all for Graham Clutterbuck. And all over the next bad mistake there from Thunderbirds are go and that relegated that one towards the rear of the field. Uh, Paul Rhodes' uh, horse there and its first prize that now moves on to take an early lead but quickly being held back as they go over that next flight and didn't put in a particularly great jump there for my stable but... It's certainly not the first horse I'm saying that about this week as I must have had around five or six, maybe even seven fallers so far this this week. It's um, not been a good round of jumping from my stable this week, that's for sure. So back at old goes into the lead, the grey horse, just ahead of Eleanor Rigby. Heron Island, glowing shrew on the outside of that one, but they're a very tightly bunched, these horses, as they start to swing right-handed and approach the next fence. No more than a couple of lengths from Eleanor Rigby and first to Thunderbirds are go, who is the current back marker. As they approach the next flight, all over it safely. Maybe Kyle Ray, uh, Glowing Shrew, sorry, wasn't that quick uh, once they got to the other side. But there's been no real serious mistakes. That uh, Nothing you would class as being a race ending mistake so far as they go over the next. And just as I say, that long haul goes for Graham Clutterbuck. Uh, commentators curse their apologies, Gray. As they come to the next, and all over that one safely, first prize, and Thunderbirds are go. Maybe looked a little bit slow uh, as the camera angle panned back, and they went over that fence, and as they go over the water jump, first prize, another awkward jump towards the rear of the field as we're getting that view from the stands, and they embark on the final circuit here at Ludlow, 10 furlongs to go, and all still in the race with the exception of a long haul that wasn't in this race for the long haul due to a bad jump a uh, couple of fences ago that saw the jockey unseated and Graham Clutterbuck's horse is out of this Stars Hoarders 6 chase qualifier so just approaching just over a mile left to go and it's Heron Island that is leading them in the all blue silks with the yellow hat but being pressed on the outside again now by Martin Leadham's rudder Eleanor Rigby who is a winner and week 2 for my co-commentators looking to follow up here with another win here at Ludlow. So uh, uh, that one's being challenged now by Eleanor. Uh, Eleanor Rigby's being challenged now by Glowing Shrew and has been passed by that one as they come over that fence. First prize uh, gets too high over that one in third and is that allowing back at all to challenge that one. The grey horse on the outside in the purple and blue silks. Kyle Rare racing over towards the rail. Jockey getting to work there on Thunderbirds. I'll go first prize is gone. First prize is gone, and I'm going to be drawing a sharp in, uh, intake of breath every time I watch one of my horses jump next week, I think, because it's been an absolute catastrophe round of jumping from many of my horses this week. But Glowing Shrew uh, in the lead now. And the all-green James Shea's runner travelling nicely as they come in the final four furlongs. Has a half a length advantage over Eleanor Rigby. A couple of lengths back then to Bacat Old, the grey horse. Kyle Ray now going to try and make a move forward, start to close this gap. Thunderbirds are go for Paul Rowe. Rhodes and Heron Island, uh, an early leader of this race, is now really struggling towards the rear of the field as they come over that fence there. Two and a half furlongs left to go. They've still got a few fences in quick succession here. And that really puts pressure on the jump in as back at Old Seas. It takes its toll there as it makes a mistake.
mistake. And uh, one and a half furlongs, it's between Glowing Shrew and Eleanor Rigby at the moment, matching each other in terms of jumping and stride for stride as they come in the final furlong. And over that one, better jump from Glowing Shrew, allowed it to take a couple of lengths out of Eleanor Rigby. But Eleanor Rigby is going to try and stay on and fight back. But we're in the final half of furlong, last fence, the water jumped to go. Glowing Shrew jumped it really well. And a great round of jumping means that Glowing Shrew wins this pretty cosily in the end for James Shea. They were bunched up for second, but Cat Old got going a little bit too late, as did Kyle Rea. And as you can see them coming towards the line, Eleanor Rigby was out jumped there the last couple of fences by Glowing Shrew, who takes it at 10 to 1. Eleanor Rigby managed to hold on for second for Martin Leadham. Kyle Rea in third. And I think Bacat Old there must have got fourth ahead of Thunderbirds Argo. So waiting for confirmation of that. Yep, Glowing Shrew wins it. Martin Leadham's Eleanor Rigby held on for second. Kyle Rea third. Bacat Old fourth. And then it was a good five and a half lengths back to Paul Rhodes' Thunderbirds Argo that finished fifth.